Phyllis O'Neill. Tonight's Tuesday, June 11th, and this is week three of our 2101 webinar series. I do want to commend you all for taking time out of your busy, busy schedule to be on here. I have a lot to cover tonight, so we're going to just get started right now. Um, as I am sure that you all know, uh, the 2101 challenge that Cindy gave all of us is two parties a month, 10 guests at each party, and sponsoring one new person to your team member each catalog season. So tonight we are going to talk about the big 10. I know that sometimes getting 10 guests to your party, hold on just a second, whoops, I didn't want to show that yet, okay, can be a challenge. So ladies, we are going to do something. I'm going to do a little poll real quick so your screen might go looking funny just for a minute. What I'm going to do is I am going to pull up a poll. You all should see a poll coming up on your screen. So what I want you to do is answer that question. Do you struggle with getting 10 guests at each party? And I will close the poll in three, two, one. Oh, I'm going to wait for one more person to vote. Everyone's voted except one, just in case. All right. Now, I'm going to show you the results. Can everyone see the results on the screen? Heather, can you see the results on the screen? If you can, I know everybody else can. Awesome. Okay, guess what? 90% of you say yes, that you struggle with getting 10 guests at each party. So guess what that means? That means that you all are in the right place tonight for this webinar. So, really quick, I want to recap why the two, 2101 system works. If you can see the Breeze Through Summer Guide on your screen, I know it might be a little bit blurry, so just bear with me. This is the success plan. So, if you're doing those two parties a month, getting 10 guests at each party and sponsoring one new person each catalog season, look at all the benefits you can earn. You're going to be making about $300 a month, and if it's this summer, you're going to be earning at least level one in our Dream Rewards. Now remember, Dream Rewards started on April 2nd and goes through August 31st. If you're not familiar with Dream Rewards, go to 31today.com, print it out, circle what you want to work towards, highlight it, hang it up near your computer, and work towards earning those rewards. If you haven't been working towards Dream Rewards, you can still bump up your efforts and work towards earning those awesome rewards. Now, as you're working towards earning a $100 Best Buy gift card, be sure and let your family know what you're working toward and discuss what you'll do with it as a family. Oh, thank you, Heather. Keep me on track. I've got to keep you in that chat box so I don't know when you're talking to me. Thank you so much. All right, and then as you leave to go to your parties, um, remind your family that you are working towards that Xbox for the family or that flat screen TV. Whatever the goal is, let your family be involved. And as I showed you in week one, if you want to accelerate, you can get on the fast track. If you're an overachiever, like many of you are, and I know that there are some of you on here tonight that absolutely love incentives and will do whatever it takes to earn them. And I want to know if I'm right, so guess what? We're going to do another poll. And I want you to, you will see the um, question coming up on the screen. And it says, do you work harder if an incentive is offered? So go ahead and start voting. And then I'll close the poll in three, two, one. It's closed, and look at the results. Oh, my goodness. 87% of you will work harder towards incentives. Yay. You guys are my kind of girls. I love it. All right. So let's get back to the presentation. If you want to get on that fast track of the 2101, you can increase it through the 4102 as you will see right here. And I'm going to pull up a little fancy little doodad. Let's see if I can do it. 
the 4102 right there. So basically, you're just doubling your parties and you're doubling your sponsoring. You will also see here that you can even take it up another notch to the 8104. Very exciting. But do you see what always stays the same? That 10 guest average in all of these. I'm not a very good circle drawer. Sorry, ladies. Um, that 10 guest average at each party stays the same. So with the four. 10 to you're doubling your commission, you're moving your dream rewards up a level and building a team faster. And obviously, as you see, if you want to be the super achiever, the superstar, top of the class consultant, and if you want to promote a lot quicker, then you can do the 8104, holding eight parties a month. Now, ladies, that's only about two parties a week. Adding four new team members each catalog season, which is one a month. And then you will be earning level three of the Dream Rewards this summer. And you could be earning $1,200 commission each month. How exciting is that? The awesome thing with this plan is that you get to pick. You get to choose what you want to do. How exciting. I tell you what, if you listen to the news or even talk to your friends and your neighbors, you know, you're going to hear stories about someone losing their job. It's all over the area, the United States. And as you can see right here, this is a business plan that anyone can take and run with. That's what I love about this 31 business plan right here. So, if you know someone who all of a sudden has had to take on the role of sole provider for their family. This is definitely the business plan to share. As the owners of our own business, we are in control of our paychecks. And don't you love being able to give yourself a raise whenever you want? So I'm very excited about this plan, and I just wanted to recap that. All right, so what can you expect to learn, to learn tonight? Tonight, we are going to identify the goal, which is getting 10 guests at each party. We're going to make a plan. We're going to set you up to take action. And you're going to incorporate some or all of what you learned tonight and see if it works. We want to come up with ways to work smarter, not harder. Do you all love the little turtle on the screen with the rocket? He definitely found a way to work smarter. I know, again, that getting out of the house some nights can be tough. And I know you don't want to work hard getting your parties ready, making up hostess packets, and driving 20, 30, or more miles to a party only to have only one or two people show up. If you're going to do all of that work, you definitely want to make it worth your while, especially if you're going to only work two nights each month following that 2101. So let's talk about the benefits of 10 guests per party. So we talked about this before and said that the average guest spend goes up. It's more lively. There's just more energy and excitement. And truly, when 10 guests are there, it's going to be so much more fun. The whole party atmosphere changes, and it is just awesome. And your hostess feels super celebrated because she has 10 friends that showed up to support her. You also have more potential bookings and more opportunity to build relationships and make new friends. So just for a minute, I am going to open up the chat. And all I, I want, what I want you all to do is what else can you think of that would be beneficial to having 10 guests at each party? The chat is opened up, so I'm going to take about 31 seconds, let you all just start typing in. What are some more benefits to having 10 guests at each party? I see some of you typing. Heather, more opportunity for the guests to sell to each other. Awesome. Love it. 
Angela, 10 more people sharing our product and my business. I love it. Absolutely. Becky, more sales for the hostess, many more goodies for her. Absolutely. And Kathy, adding more members to your team. Yes. Leah, I like it when all the food that my hostess prepared and bought gets eaten. I feel bad when there's a ton of food left over. I love it. All right. Thank you all for sharing. I'm going to go ahead and close the chat. Uh, except for Heather. Heather, will you let me know if you can still um, chat there? Great. Thank you. All right. Great ideas, ladies. Thank you so much. All right. So, how do you get 10 guests? Now, it's easy for me to sit here and tell you, get 10 guests at your party. But the how is the important part. So tonight, I want to give you some ideas and show you how that you and your hostesses can get 10 guests at her party. So this is how we're going to do it tonight. We are going to Hostess Coach. Getting 10 guests at your parties starts with proper hostess coaching. Hostess coaching might just be the most important part of our business. And there are three elements of proper hostess coaching. And I call them the three C's of hostess coaching. Connecting, coaching, and celebrating. We are going to connect with her. We are going to coach her. And we are going to celebrate her big time. So let's talk about the connecting part first. Now, a lot of this is just casual conversations. If you are not connecting with her on an emotional, relational, or spiritual level, she's not going to be excited or motivated to go the extra mile, and she's not going to feel a personal connection to you. You have got to connect with your hostess somehow. If she was at a party and she was interested in booking her own party, that is the beginning of your connection and your relationship with her right then and there. So make it personal. Look her in the eye. Maybe put your hand on her shoulder. Tell her how excited you are that she wants to host her own party. Ask her about herself, her family. What does she do for fun? Does she have any hobbies? Does she belong to a gym or any other clubs? Remember the GTKY questions that we talked about last week? GTKY stands for, huh, you know what, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to open up chat. I want somebody to tell me what GTKY stands for. First person that tells me, going to get a gift in the mail from me. Ready, set, go. Oh, Heather, I'm going to let you, okay. Heather and Diana, okay, awesome. Yay. All right, I'm going to close it. You guys are awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Heather and Diana, and the reason I'm doing two is because Heather kind of has an up on all of you all because the chat's open to her. But Heather and Diana, if you will both email me after this, um, so many cute bags at AOL.com, and um, remind me what I told you on the, on the webinar, okay? All right, so uh, now I've lost my place. Okay, GTY questions. GTKY. Getting to know you. You want to, no, Heather, that's okay. No problem at all. You want to ask getting to know you questions to start making that personal connection and start building that relationship. Find something that will help you connect with her. So, whether that first initial contact is at a party, on the phone, at a Starbucks, in the grocery store line, at Target, wherever it may be, it is crucial that you make that personal connection. Trust me, it's going to make your job even more fun when you're partying with friends versus partying with strangers. So the next time you're making that initial contact, I challenge you to find a personal connection with her, whether it be emotional, relational, or spiritual. Whatever it is, find that personal connection. Now, even if that doesn't come natural to you, when you start being intentional about it, it will become a natural habit. Once you start doing this and then continue with each new hostess, you're going to start building new friendships and relationships, and you really will want to know what is going on in their lives. 
it's really neat how God takes over that way and puts so many awesome people in our lives through our 31 business. Now, don't be the consultant who only meets the hostess twice. And what I mean by that is you meet her wherever you've made that first initial contact when she booked a party with you, and then you don't talk to her again until the night of the party. I'm going to just be honest here. When I first started, I was guilty of that. But I've learned since, and I learned pretty quickly, that that was definitely not the way to do it. So if she booked at a party, ask her if she has about 30 minutes available tomorrow for you to give her a call to go over some things for her party. Or you could offer to meet her somewhere for coffee or a soft drink. Another thing, if she has kids, you could even offer to meet her at the park. And while your all kids are playing, you can do the hostess coaching and you'll be connecting with her and building that relationship even further. Bottom line, once someone has booked a party, you must contact that hostess within 24 to 48 hours to start the proper hostess coaching. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. We aren't near over, ladies, so, but I just want to recap on the connecting. So to recap, again, make it personal. Ask getting to know you questions to find that personal connection. Be genuine and be intentional. So let's move on over to the next part, which is the actual coaching part, which I love. Now, before I say something, I want you all to really pay attention to this. Hostess coaching begins the minute someone books a party with you. You set the tone and you set the expectations. This is your business and there are things that are non-negotiable. You must be in control of your parties. If you're not, the hostesses will be. You want each hostess to have the best party ever, so don't settle and don't negotiate. And I'll tell you right now, hostess coaching is non-negotiable. So, what does your hostess want? Does she want free products? Or does she just want a girls' night out with her girlfriends? Or does she just really want to support you in your business? You, as her coach and as her personal coach and personal consultant, are going to dig a little bit deeper and you're going to sift it out a little more to help her get what she wants. So that first step is to know her goals. Do you know what she wants out of this? Now, I want to say something else here, and this is very important, and I really want you to take note of this. If you have something to write with, jot it down, drill it in your memory, and never, ever, ever forget this. Do not ever hostess coach your hostesses for a $200 party, ever. Why? That is all they will work toward. How many times have you said, or none of you on here I know has ever said that, but maybe you've heard another consultant say to someone that's interested in booking a party, oh, you only need $200 in orders and you can earn free products and that's so easy to do. Well, if that's you, and I doubt that again that it's you, if you've heard other consultants, right, you just tell them, don't do that. Stop right now because if you're telling your hostess that she only needs a $200 party, trust me, that is all she's going to work towards. So right off the bat, you're sabotaging her party, you're sabotaging her and yourself. And then here's some other things that you, I, I know you've probably heard before. Our, our average hostess gets $100 in free products, two half price items, and two hostess exclusive products. Now. You see on the screen where, it's, where I've got um, the word average typed there. I'm going to circle that. You see I've got average typed there, and I've got it double crossed out. And I'll tell you why. Okay, if you are saying that our average hostess gets, you know, $100 in free products, two half price items, two hostess exclusive. Once again, when you say that, you're sabotaging her and yourself. How? Because one, you're basing this 
on a $600 party. Two, you're automatically planting a seed in her mind of being an average hostess. So instead of this, you can say this. Our average hostesses get $100 of free products, two half-price items, and two hostess exclusive products. But, and I'm going to use my hostess name as Heather, since Heather's my helper on here tonight. I'm going to pretend Heather's my hostess, and I'm going to say, but Heather, you're not just average. You are excellent, and I want to show you what you're going to get. Then you are going to show her the $1,200 party and the benefits for that. $250 in free products three half-priced items, and three Hostess-exclusive products free. Be excited and show belief in her right from the start. So, ladies, so important. If we coach our hostesses as average, their parties will be average or maybe even below. We must coach our hostesses as excellent. Please don't ever forget that. So, you also ask her questions and gently push her to the next level. Inspire her. Get her excited. Ask questions such as, so what products are, going to work, are you going to work towards getting for free? What do you love about that or those products? What do you want me to do at your party? Do you want to play games? And even ask her, what are you going to wear at your party? What do you want me to wear? In other words, fun, casual, business casual, or more dressy. You want to um, dress appropriately for her and her guests. And that's when you want to ask her what kind of guests will be there. Working moms, stay-at-home moms, corporate or business women, retired women, teachers, nurses, and, and so on. Find out the types of people that will be at the party. So there are lots of questions you can ask and the more you ask, the more you get to know her and you're helping turn her into a star hostess. You're taking the pressure off of you and you're giving her the reins to kind of run this party to a certain extent, okay? You are showing her that you believe in her. And what is all that doing to? You could be training a potential new consultant. So again, you're going to inspire her, you're going to share what you make at the parties, and you're going to inspire her to go to the next level. You can even talk to her about she, how she imagines her party. For instance, you could say something like this. Now, Heather, I want you to close your eyes just for a minute and imagine it's the night of your party. Who do you actually envision there? Who is at your party? And as she's doing that and you're asking her those names, you need to be jotting down those names because those are the ladies that she is going to reach out to. And nine times out of ten, She's going to name about 10 women. It's amazing when you ask someone, who do you envision coming to your party? That it will usually always be at least 10 women. Now have a checklist also, so you will know what needs to be covered on each contact with your hostess, and so you can schedule follow-ups with her. This is very important. You need to know when you're going to contact her and what you're going to talk about. So put some kind of a system into place if you don't already have one. You should be talking to the hostess at least three times before her party. Now that first initial contact does not count as one of those, those three times, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But do keep in mind that the three times may vary depending on how far out her party is booked, so be mindful of that. Also, now we know there may be extenuating circumstances, and although we learn to be flexible in our business, we can't give away complete control. So remember what I said earlier, this is your business, and there are things that are non-negotiable. You need to be in control of your business, your parties. If you're not, the hostess will be. You want each hostess to have the best party ever, so don't settle. And remember that hostess coaching is non-negotiable. Now, your first hostess coaching contact should be, again, within 24 to 48 hours of her booking the party. Now, in a perfect world, we would have time to do our first initial hostess coaching at the party, and I mean proper hostess coaching, but honestly, I found that unless the ones who booked the parties at the parties 
are willing to stay around about 20 minutes or so after the party is over and after you've taken care of all the other guests, there isn't really time to do the proper hostess coaching at the party. But again, every party's different. If you have the time, definitely go ahead and do it then. But if you don't, make sure that your first hostess coaching contact is within 24 to 48 hours of her booking the party. You have to talk to her when she's still excited. We know all too well that the longer we wait, the less excited they can be, and they might start second-guessing themselves and doubting, you know, why in the world did I book a party? Um, she may have even decided not to have a party if you wait, you know, too long to contact her. So it is just part of our job to schedule an appointment with her in our calendar that night when she when they book and before she leaves that party to call or meet with her in the first 24 to 48 hours after she's booked. Now, in these days of Facebook, texting, emails, and so forth, even though we think we are communicating, we are actually doing our hostesses and ourselves a huge disservice because those methods are not personal. If you are not actually talking with her voice to voice or face to face, you're really not connecting with her. Now, remember, that first hostess coaching contact needs to be in person if at all possible. Don't panic. That doesn't mean the other two hostess coaching, you know, sessions have to be done on the phone or face to face. So, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Before you finish that first hostess coaching meeting with her, there's something very important that you need to ask her. First of all, you're going to let her know that as part of your personal service, you will be in touch with her at least two more times prior to her party. And of course, tell her if she needs anything at all in between those times, all she has to do is call you. Now, by letting her know this right up front, she's going to know that you're going to be keeping in touch with her. And that way, she is not surprised when she hears from you a few times up and through the date of the party. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to ask her this. So I would say, Heather, what's your preferred method of communication? Ask her, do you prefer phone calls? text messages, emails, private Facebook messages, or some other form of communication. Now, by asking her what her preferred method of communication is, this is going to save you and her both so much frustration. How many times have you had a hostess not answer or return your phone calls? How many times have you had a hostess not answer your emails or text messages? Or how many times have you had a hostess not answer a private Facebook message? So ladies, did it ever dawn on you that you might be contacting her in a way that she prefers not to be contacted? Finding out which method of communication she prefers is going to be huge for the remainder of your hostess coaching with her. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> While you're encouraging her, encouraging her to have at left for party, you can give her something to visualize. You can say something like this. Now, Heather, imagine going to a party and there was only one or two other people there. It would probably be a little uncomfortable and not very lively at all. You might even feel a little obligated to buy something, right? Now, Heather, imagine going to a party and there are 10 to 12 other ladies there. Everyone is laughing and having a great time, and no one feels awkward or pressured to buy, and it's truly like a big group of girlfriends having a fun get-together. Which one of these parties do you think your friends would have the most fun at, Heather? Now, unless Heather's dead, she's going to choose the second option, the one with all the 10 to 12 other ladies. So, by having her visualize this, I know you aren't, Heather. <laughs> teasing you, um, by having her visualize the difference in those two parties, you're helping her to understand the importance of having 10 guests there. That is a great visual and a great motivator for her. 
So help her with her guest list. Find out who her friends are. Who is she going to invite? invite. Your hostess is the key. She knows her friends better than anyone else. She knows what they're going to like, and she's going to be excited and motivated to invite them. Now, something else I want to add real quickly here is be sure and tell your hostess ahead of time, ahead of time that you are going to be offering each guest to book a party of their own. Then, very tactfully and gently, ask her not to discourage any of her guests from booking a party. Tell her you're not going to pressure them at all, but just tell her that you've had hostesses before who are, who are you know, seem to always want to tell their friends, oh, don't worry, you don't have to book a party, that's okay. So, you know what, this is the connection you're making with your hostess. You're being upfront with her right from the start, and it's going to help um, with the know, the like, and the trust factor. She's going to know and expect that you will be offering every guest at her party to book their own. And she's going to be aware and she's going to remember not to tell her guests that they don't have to book a party. She's going to appreciate you telling her this right up front. Of course, you want to tell her to over-invite. She can't just write down the 10 names and be done with her guest list. And thank goodness, 31 provides us with some awesome resources. All right, on your screen, you are going to see the Planning a Great Party document for Hostess Coaching. And I want to pull up, uh, hold on just a second, I want to pull up another poll. And you all will see it coming up on your screen. I want to know how many of you use this document, the Planning a Great Party document, for your parties for your hostess coaching. There's a yes, a no, or I will now. So I will close the poll in three, two, and one. And let's look at the results. So 59% of you use it. Yay. Uh, only 3% don't. And 33% said they will now. So awesome. You can find the, um, let me close out of the survey. You can find this planning a great party document um, on 31today.com under toolbox. And you can print these out or you can order them from business supply. This is a phenomenal tool. There's no need to waste your precious time trying to come up with your own. Again, we're talking about working smarter, not harder, and this document is awesome. So, start with this side of the document, and because this is actually a two-sided document, we'll be showing you the second side in just a minute. Now, tell your hostess to circle the three hostess exclusive, exclusive items that she wants for free, and you can hand her a Sharpie or a pen, and tell her to circle those three hostess exclusive items that she wants for free. Now, whatever she circles, you need to ooh and all ah those products and tell her what great taste she has. Tell her that you cannot wait for her to get them for free. Ask her what she's going to use them for. And then you're going to move over to the, to the right column and show her the $1,200 level and tell her that's where she's going to be. Let her know that it is typically 15 to 20 orders, and then ask her, Heather, do you know 15 to 20 people that will order? And she's either going to say, oh, yeah, no problem. Or she might say, no, I don't know that many people. And if she says that, that's when you're going to say, that is okay. I am going to help you find them. And then you're just going to flip this sheet right over, and there's the other side. And you'll tell her. We're going to get 40 guests in four minutes right now. And you ask her to start filling that out. So you can see right there that it gives her, it, it will jog her, you know, memory on who to invite for acquaintances, for coworkers, for contacts from, you know, kids, school activities, um, for relatives, for neighbors, for friends for spouses, coworkers, for church or social group activities. 
So right there, she just starts writing down the names that come to her mind. You, as her consultant, are there to cheer her on and help, help her get that filled out. Once she gets the name filled in, give her a big, big woohoo, and then hand her a guest list. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, on your screen, you're going to see a guest list that I created, and um, what I would do is give this to her, and at the top, I have a pre-typed message with blanks that I will fill in while I'm going over this with her. So I actually, as I give this to her, I read it to her at the very top, and it says, um, and I'll fill in those blanks that she's right there with me. So the message at the top, in case you cannot see it on the screen, it says, return this guest list to me by, and I will put the date in there that I want her to return that to me by, and I'm going to circle it. And you will receive a special gift from me. It also says that I have enclosed a self-addressed stamped envelope, envelope for her convenience. Now, after I've written in that date and circled it, I'm going to hand her that guest list and that self-addressed stamped envelope and tell her to fill that out completely and drop it into the mail. Now, remember, on this um, previous here where she wrote down those 40 guests in four minutes, she's just going to transfer those names over to this guest list and now on the guest list, she's going to include their address, phone, email, all of that information. And then um, you're going to say, now, remember, Heather, when I receive it by, you know, the date that circled, as a bonus gift, um, you're going to receive a bonus gift the night of your party. Okay, now, I know that some of you on this webinar tonight are probably wondering why in the world I want her guest list. Okay, so. That brings me to another fun poll. I am going to open up another poll for you all. And I want to know, do you mail out the invitations for your hostess? Answer either, no, I never mail them out myself. Yes, I always mail them out myself. Or sometimes me, sometimes the hostess. And I will close the poll in Three, two, one. Okay, let's share the results. All right, 21% say, no, I never mail them myself. 39%, yes, I always mail them out myself. And 28% say, sometimes me, sometimes the hostess. All right, awesome. Thank you all for doing that. All right, here is why I want the guest list. Now, you can call it a control issue. I really don't care. Whatever you want. But I do mail the invitations out myself. Now, I'll be honest, one of the first things my hostesses say when I tell them to fill out that guest list with the addresses, the phone number, the email, and so forth, here's what they say to me. Oh, no, that's okay. I'll just text them or email them or I'll post it on Facebook or I'll be seeing them. So I'll just tell them. Now, my reply back to her goes something like this. You know what, Heather, that's awesome. And I appreciate that because that will definitely be so helpful. However, part of my job as your consultant is to make sure that you and your friends have the best party possible. I want you to get lots of free products get everything on that wish list and have lots of guests in attendance and honestly I found that an actual handwritten invitation in the US mail really increases attendance and sales so let me do that for you and you can still invite your friends any other way you want to now remember what I said earlier you set the tone and you set the expectation this is your business and there are things that are non-negotiable. My opinion, my mailing out the invitations is non-negotiable. So if you're not mailing out the invitations yourself, I just like to issue a challenge to start doing that yourself and see what a difference that makes. Now think for a minute about how many emails you get every day. And maybe I should say, how often do you check your email? Think about how many emails end up in your spam folder. 
We don't even know how often people check their email. Also, how many Facebook invitations do you get inviting you to this and that and this and that? And I'm going to be honest, I get so many. It's got to the point, truly, I ignore them. I ignore them all. I see them up there in my Facebook, you know, wherever it's called, on my Facebook, whatever that's called. I can't even look at them because I've got so many. So, um, while it's fine and awesome that your hostess sends invitations um, that way, you know, however she's wanting to do, don't let that be the only invitation her guests get. You are the consultant. It is our job to take care of our hostess by helping her to have the most successful party possible. And we can do that by something as simple as mailing out those invitations in the United States mail. Remember, postage is a tax-deductible business expense. Yay! Exciting. So, ah, I'll get off that soapbox for a minute, and let's go back to the reverse side of that planning a great party document. Um, let's talk about that wish list that's over there in the top right-hand part of it. Now, you're going to want your, to show your hostess the wish list. They're going to ask her to fill this out with everything she wants to earn for free at, or at a discount. Tell her that when you contact her next, and remember, you're going to need to tell her what date you'll be contacting her next. You're going to be asking her what's on her wish list. Now, if you've got a super duper excited hostess who already knows what she wants and starts filling it out, then absolutely let her go for it, fill it out, and you can just jot those items down on a piece of paper so you're going to know what she's working towards. Because remember, she's going to keep this sheet because she's transferring the names there over to that guest list that you're going to be giving her. So, ladies, this is a fabulous tool to use. You're going to know what she wants, and you're going to be able, able to help coach her better to help her earn all or most of it for free. When a hostess knows what she's working towards, she is going to be much more excited and motivated. You can also take her wish list to the party and let the guests know what she was working towards and for having the party tonight. Let her know that these are the products that she plans she is going to earn for free. And all of that that we've been talking about and doing up to this uh, moment, ladies, this is going to help you get 10 guests at every party. So if you don't know where to begin, this is where you start. Another great tool that 31 offers is our hostess coaching checklist. Now this you can find under the toolbox on 31today.com. So when somebody books a party, you fill in her information at the top as the, as the hostess, and then you write down the dates that you'll be contacting her, and make sure she writes down those dates too, or puts in her iPhone, whatever. <coughs> Um, pardon me. This is a great guideline for you, and you'll want to write the dates in your calendar. Um, and again, make sure the hostess knows when you're going to be contacting her. This checklist has the initial contact and the contact one, two, and three, as well as what to do at the end of party and after the party. I love this hostess coaching checklist. Now, let's talk about incentives for a little bit. Now, I do want you to keep in mind that the incentives I'm going to be talking about, or any incentives, you do not have to offer incentives on your own. What I'm going to share, I'm just sharing these, and you can take or leave them. I just found um, that the hostesses love incentives, and I found that it definitely increases guest attendance at the parties, which is what we're talking about tonight, getting at least 10 guests to your parties. So if you're struggling, you might want to offer one of these incentives. All right. The first one is called a 5-10-1 incentive for hostesses, and you should see that on your screen. Now, you can use retired products and reward your hostesses using the 5-10-1 system. Here's what it is. As you're coaching your hostess, you can tell her, Heather, if you have five outside orders, and you have 10 guests at your parties, and you get one booking before the party begins, I'm going to give you this awesome 
retired product that cannot be purchased anymore. You are going to get this for free. And that is on top of everything else you're going to be getting. Now, what might sound even better? And I learned this from one of my awesome senior directors, Tammy Thompson. Instead of using the words retired product, say collector's edition product. Trust these two words can make the hostess even more excited to work towards getting that collector's edition product for free. So you would tell her, if you have five outside orders and you have 10 guests at your party and you get one booking before the party begins, I'm going to give you this awesome collector's edition product that can't be purchased anymore. You're going to get it for free. Isn't that exciting? Now, it might be a thermal product that we don't sell anymore. It might be an older version of our skirt purse. It could be a wallet or, you know what, depending on how bad you need that party, ladies, it could be a Cindy tote in a retired fabric. Remember, if you've been building a relationship with your hostess up until this point, you're going to know what product would really excite and motivate her. So again, 5101, five outside orders before you even get to that party. Now imagine going to the hostess's party and having five outside orders waiting for you. It's exciting. And one party booked before that party begins. Wouldn't that be awesome? That party is already worth the time that you and your hostess have invested. And you've got 10 guests there. Now remember, those five outside orders that the hostess got before her party even began, those are from people who aren't coming to the party. So that's five orders and now you have 10 guests at your party and oh my goodness, she is going to get that $1,200, um, all the rewards for that $1,200 party. Now, if you don't have retired products to give away or maybe you're a new consultant, you could offer her something else, a percentage off of something if she wants to purchase something above and beyond her hostess rewards or um, give her a free personalization on a product or tell her that you'll give her free shipping on her hostess order or a percentage off a hostess exclusive if she doesn't get, you know, one for free. Something else you could do, and I'm going to use this month's special as an example. So, you could offer her a large utility tote for free. We know that our hostess rewards don't include the monthly customer special, and if she wanted to order one for herself, now she'd have to spend the $35 to get one for 10 and you'd have to enter her order as a customer order. So you can make that part of your 5101 incentive and give her one for free when she has five outside orders. That's $10 out of your pocket. Um, and of course, 10 guests at a party and one booking before you get to the party. So you can get creative. There's always something you can offer your hostesses um, and they're going to get excited about. So if she's doing the 5101, just definitely reward her in some way. Another incentive that you could do is a hostess tic-tac-toe incentive. Now again, please keep in mind, you do not have to do any additional incentive. Our hostess program is awesome. So don't feel like you have to do these. Uh, again, I'm just offering suggestions that might help with getting 10 guests at your parties if that's something that you're struggling with and increasing your sales and getting bookings. So let's look at this tic-tac-toe. I'm sure you've probably seen something like this before, but this is the tic-tac-toe incentive you used if you wanted to. So basically she can get something for three in a row or something for getting all squares X out. Whatever you offer her, make it work for your budget. Okay, because you can see that, you know, I put on here any tic-tac-toe down across her diagonal, receive an additional $20 in free products. If that's with your budget, don't offer that. You can change that up and offer what you want. Or, you know, I put get all the squares x out and receive $50 in free products of your choice. Again, I'm working with my, in my budget. I'm a senior executive director. My budget is probably not going to be what your all's budget is. So I want to, you to be very mindful of that because we are not in the business to lose money. We are in the business to make some money. All right, now I want to talk about a VIP club. All right, the VIP club is something I've heard about recently. 
I haven't even tried this yet, but I was so excited when I heard about this. I absolutely love the concept, and I do plan on giving this a try. Uh, again, I was so excited when I came across it, and I couldn't wait to share it with all of you tonight. Now, again, I'm going to say, work within your budget. Um, work as your income allows you. I would never, ever expect you know, my consultants or senior consultants and so forth to use the same budget as me. Uh, as you know, extra income is a perk of leadership and climbing the ladder of success. So as you promote, your budget for things like this will get bigger, ladies. So you can definitely do the VIP club now if you want. But again, please work within your budget. Now, I do want to give you just a little caution here. If you do decide to do one of these incentives, such as the 5101 or the tic-tac-toe or the VIP incentive, please keep it off of Facebook unless you have a private page set up for your hostess. This is just one of the reasons, ladies, that 31 has implemented rules and the policies and procedures for posting things on Facebook. And I want you to think about this. Can you imagine? If the rules, those Facebook rules, were not in place by 31, and if if all of our consultants and leaders were publicly posting their own personal incentives all over Facebook, oh my goodness, can you imagine the chaos that would create? And not only that, we would have our own customers and hostesses shopping for that best deal. Really. Of course, we hope that they would always be loyal to us, but ladies, they're human. They don't understand, like we do, how direct sales and party plan works. And they may not even realize they're not being loyal. So if they saw that another consultant or leader, whoever, another 31 consultant, um, was offering a better deal or incentive than you were, they may decide they like that incentive better. That is not what we want to happen. So again, if you offer incentives, your own personal incentives, please don't ever post them post publicly on Facebook or any other uh, you know, site for that matter. You keep those private on a private page for your hostesses and your customers. Whew. All right. I hope that made sense, and I'm going to get off that soapbox. Now I'm going to get back to that VIP club. So ask your hostess for her top VIP guests. That means a very important guests, meaning the top 10 ladies that, one, will benefit from 31, two, who love the products, and three, who will, without a doubt, use the products. You want those names at least two weeks before the party because you're going to mail those 10 VIP guests a special invitation. Now, I, I know I talked about mailing the party invitations out, and, and I do that for for my hostesses. This is this VIP club is just a little di bit different, just for this ten VIPs. The rest of this hostesses guest list, I'm going to mail them out, but I'm going to have her mail out the ten VIP guests a special invitation. Sorry, I'm going to do that. Never mind, never mind. Ignore that. Okay, let me get back to it. So the invitation is going to say something like, um, and I'm going to use the, let's see whose name. I see Diana's name on the screen, so I'm going to use Diana as my, <coughs> pardon me, one of those 10 VIP guests. You're going to say, Dear Diana, you are Heather's VIP. She would love to invite you to her party on this date and time. Because you are her VIP, you get a catalog to pre preview before the party, and you will also get a special gift from me when you attend the party. And if you bring a guest, she will get a gift as well. Now, you can put these special invitations in one of our pink envelopes that you can purchase from Business Supply. And you can handwrite on the outside of the envelope, you are a VIP. Now, the reason I say write it by hand is because it's fun to get something handwritten in the mail. It's fun to get something in a hot pink envelope. It adds that more personal touch 
and you want that for your VIP guests. If you're artsy, you can use different colored markers or some fancy glitter markers or so forth, but you want that envelope, envelope to look fun and you want those 10 VIP ladies to feel so special. Now the gifts that we talked about, those can be nail files from our business supply, it can be hand creams from the dollar store, it can be some of our note cards. I don't know if you all have ever done this, but you can actually split up a pack of our note cards and for instance, put two cards and two envelopes inside her goodie bag. If you want, you can go ahead and put a postage stamp on those envelopes for her. We've also got cute ink pens that you can get from business supply and you can, what woman, what women really don't like chocolate, you can throw in four to five Hershey's Kisses or other, you know, wrapped, uh, individually wrapped chocolate candy. So you kind of get the idea. Just a very few inexpensive items that you're going to put in a fun bag, tie it with a cute bow, and you're going to give that to your VIPs at the party. Honestly, you don't have to spend much on these at all, just about, you know, a dollar um, or so. Now, Here's where I got mixed up. You are actually going to ask your hostess to call all 10 of her VIPs, and she's going to say something like this. Hey, this is Heather. I just want to make sure you got a packet from Phyllis because I asked her to make you a VIP. So are you coming to the party? So she's going to be calling her VIPs personally. So not only is she getting contacted, the VIP getting contacted by me, but by a big, beautiful pink envelope containing a very special invitation, her very own catalog in the mail, and she's also getting a follow-up phone call from her friend, the hostess. Now, if you can't afford to mail out 10 catalogs, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Mail out many catalogs, and you can still still mail out that special you know, her special invitation, telling her that she's a VIP. And then the night of the party, be sure to celebrate those VIPs when they walk in the door. Yay, you're a VIP. I'm so glad you came. The hostess told me that she knew you would just love this tonight. So that's kind of the VIP club. Now, contact two. When you contact the hostess the second time, you want to let her know that you've mailed the invitations to all of her guests. Confirm that she has personally called her VIP club guests. Check to see if she needs more catalogs, order forms, and so forth. Ask her how the outside orders are coming along. And if she has a private Facebook event set up, encourage her to build excitement about her party through there. And of course, you as a consultant can do that too on that private Facebook event. You want to keep her excitement up by reminding her of all those free products she's going to be getting. Tell her how awesome of a hostess she is and just build her up and let her know how much you appreciate her and believe in her. Let her know ahead of time during your coaching process that you are going to be celebrating her at the party. So tell her to get ready to be queen for a day or queen for a night. Tell her that you We'll be making the reminder calls to all of our guests. And I know that you all are like, what? I'm going to get to that in just a minute, too. And lastly, remind her when you will be contacting her next, which should be a couple days before her party. All right. Contact three. The third time you're going to contact the hostess will be about two days before the party. You're going to confirm the date and time of the party, directions to her home, the time you will arrive at the party. Also, after, you know, do you need to bring a table for your display? And again, a table is not mandatory, ladies. You can set up products in different areas of her room. Um, so, you know, if she doesn't have a table, if you don't have a table, don't worry about it. Um, <coughs> pardon me, my throat's getting dry, ladies. I'm talking too much. Okay. Um, let's see, ask her, you know, where you're going to be set up, setting up at, and then ask her if she has an area that you can um, do the order taking. Again, you're going to ask her about the outside orders, and if you're doing the 510-1 incentive, 
um, ask how she's doing on that and ask her about the booking. Answer any questions she have. have. Tell her that you think she would be great at doing what you do and ask her to be sure to read through that business opportunity information that you um, gave to her. Ask her to read that, or sorry, ask her to read through that before you get to the party so you can go over it with her before the party starts so you can answer any questions she has. Now, tell her that you're going to remake, make the reminder calls to all of her guests. And I like to make the reminder calls myself for several reasons. And again, oh, maybe it's a control issue. I don't care. I, yeah, I'll admit it. It is. I will admit it. It is. Um, I found that there are some real benefits to making the reminder call. Probably first and foremost is I know it's going to get done. So I'm not going to sweat over it because uh, it's going to get done. And then when I make the reminder calls, I can't tell you how many people say, oh, my goodness, thank you so much for calling. I would have completely forgot about it. You know, I've heard people say, oh, I put that. Yes, I got that in the mail, but I can't remember where I put it. Thank you for calling. You know, another thing is I get to introduce myself as the consultant, and it is amazing how you can start building a relationship with a one-minute or less phone call. And when you finally get to meet that guest in person the night of the party, instead of it being the first time you meet, you already feel like you know her a little bit already because of that phone call you made. And if she can't attend the party, you get to ask her if she had a chance to look at the catalog. If not, be sure to make arrangements to get her one. Let her know that you're so sorry you won't be able to meet her in person. And let her know that she can still place an order by and give her the closing date of the party. And obviously, um, be sure to let her know that if she like, you know, lots of free 31 products, if she loves them as much as Heather, the hostess, loves them, she can have her own girls' night out. So let's talk about, oh, I'm sorry. Also, you do want to let the hostess know um, about those reminder phone calls and what, and what transpired during those. Now, let's talk about the third C of proper hostess coaching, and that is celebrating the hostess. Celebrating your hostess is so important. It's fun. It's going to make the hostess feel so special. And the guests at the party get to see what a big deal you've made over the hostess. And how many people sitting there at that party would love to be celebrated? Seriously. How many of them came from work, maybe worked in the corporate world like I used to work, and we were stressed out to the max? We were never celebrated, and we were beat down. I mean, really, how many there at your party have had a rough day? Something hasn't gone right, or their kids got on their last nerve. There's something. So how many are going to sit there watching that hostess being celebrated and thinking, man, I wish that was me. So we must celebrate our hostesses. Now, if you have incentives for your hostesses, you're going to want to celebrate her with those. For instance, if she returned that guest list to you by the date that you told her to, remember, she's going to get an extra gift. So at the party, when you've called your hostess up front to celebrate her, you're going to make a big deal and you're actually going to hand her the gift and say, um, Heather, this is that special gift I have for you just for returning the guest list to me by, you know, whatever date or just for returning that guest list to me. And leave it at that. And automatically, that's a seed being planted. And they're going to think, wow, she gets a gift just for returning the guest list. So you're going to say, thank you so much for doing this. Of course, this is an extra bonus that you're receiving, in addition to all the free products you're going to be getting for hosting this party tonight. Now, what are some other ways we can celebrate our hostess while we're coaching her? Well, I will tell you that the two words, thank you, can never be overdone. They can go such a long way. So, um, you know, when you're talking to your hostess, don't hang up that phone until you've said, thank you so much. I appreciate you hosting a party. And 
Also, as I mentioned before, you tell her that is your job as her consultant to help reach her goals, to help her and partner with her to get everything that is on her wish list for free. That's another form of celebrating the hostess because she knows that you care and you let her know that you are going to be with her every step of the way. If she has an event page set up on Facebook, a private one, you can definitely woohoo her on there. Now, some other ways to celebrate <clears throat> during the hostess coaching process, you're going to reward her efforts on that private Facebook uh, page if you have that set up. On every phone call or email or text message, again, whatever method of communication that she, you ask her that she preferred, you're going to just, you know, wow, thanks so much for contacting those VIP club girls. How, how did it go? That's fabulous. Obviously, again, at the party in front of everyone, you're going to make a big deal out of your hostess, um, thanking her for hosting a party. You talk about the things that are on her wish list and what she's getting for free. Again, if you're doing the 510 one or the tic-tac-toe, um, if you offer those incentives, you can share that with the guest. Remember, all those guests there at the party are hearing and seeing how much that hostess is getting celebrated and praised. They are going to love it. And of course, your hostess is going to feel like a queen. Another form of celebration, maybe you have thought about this, maybe you haven't. How about on your way to the party? Call her and let her know, hey, Heather, I'm on the way to your party. Is there anything you need? Do you have enough ice? Or do you need another box of brownies? Anything you can do to offer to help her. She's going to really appreciate that. Now, to recap, we are connecting and building a relationship with our hostess and always coaching and praising her to that next level. This VI, or excuse me, the um, 5101 or that tic-tac-toe or VIP club can be a great help to you with your hostess coaching and in helping her get the 10 guests to her party so that you can celebrate her. Now, we're getting close to being done, ladies. Thank you so much for hanging in with me tonight. Um, let's talk real quick about after the party. Within 24 hours after the party, send her a handwritten thank you note in the mail. And that's in the U.S. mail. Once her party order is shipped, give her a call and let her know what day it's scheduled to be delivered on. Ask if she has any questions. You can obviously ask if she wants you to, if you're having the order shipped to her, you can even ask her, say, hey, do you want me to come over? And if it's convenient for you and you can do it, awesome. Um, if you're having it shipped to you, shipped to you um, maybe she wants to come over to your house. But however that works, just let her know when it's being shipped and what day it's scheduled to be delivered. Keep in touch with her and keep her on your contact plus mailing so she will always know about our monthly customer specials, new catalogs, new products, and so forth. If you have a hostess appreciation event, obviously be sure to invite her. And you can even invite her to opportunity events and even to be a guest at one of your Celebrate and Connect meetings. And another thing, don't ever hesitate to ask, ask an excellent hostess if she would like to attend another party with you as her assistant. Wouldn't it be nice to have a helper with you at your parties? What better person to take with you than an awesome hostess. Remember, she could be your next superstar team member. And last but certainly not least, in fact, this is very important, is to be a friend to her. Continue that relationship with your hostess after that party is closed and is over. If you know she's struggling with something or has something going on in her personal life, drop a card in the mail to her. Let her know that you're thinking about her and how much you appreciate her. If you keep track of your hostess's birthdays, be sure to celebrate those. So, I know this was a ton of information. I hope that you've learned the importance of hostess coaching, how fun it can be, not only for your hostess, but for you as well. And before I open up the chat, um, let's talk real quick about what's coming next week. Um, next week, Tuesday, June 18th, same time, 8.30 Central, we're going to talk about getting that one new team member, team member for catalog season. You've been partying like crazy, and now you want to start building your team. Ladies, four and a half years ago, someone offered me the opportunity. And even though at that time I said, if you're looking for a worker bee, that's not me. 
and I didn't tell anyone that I joined, including my husband, my sisters, and so forth, for the first three months, I realized in March 2009 that was the best gift I had ever been given, the gift of 31, and the blessings keep coming, and you all, you all on, on this webinar tonight are part of those blessings. Um, so remember, when you change your mindset about offering our opportunity and make it all about them, not about you, everything changes. We're going to talk about all of that next week, and I'm very excited about that. I hope you are too. Um, as a reminder, the replay of tonight's webinar will be mailed, emailed out tomorrow. A separate email with another link to register for next week's webinar is going to be mailed out in a couple of days. Um, you can listen to the replays of these uh, webinars one and two and three. Last but not least, I love this quote. You can see on your screen, three simple rules in life. If you do not go after what you want, you'll never have it. Two, if you do not ask, the answer will always be no. And three, if you do not step forward, you'll always be in the same place. All right, I am going to open you all up. If you all are still hanging in with me, I appreciate it so much. I'm opening up the chat. If anybody has any questions or comments, uh, celebrations, anything at all, I would love um, to hear those. You can chat right in that chat box. Oh, yeah, Diana, awesome. Uh, and you're welcome, Heather. Thank you so much for being my um, helper tonight on this webinar. Okay, Diana, great. Thoughts on ways to do this for out-of-town out of hostesses? Absolutely. Um, really, you want to do the pretty much the exact same thing for out-of-state and catalog parties and so forth. Still do either, you know, the tic-tac-toe, the VIP incentive, um, but still have the incentive for the 10 orders. Um, also, you'll want to schedule the next time you'll be calling her. Um, tell her your talk about it when, when you'll be closing the party. Tell her that there are a few things that you would like for her to do between now and then, and that is... For instance, open a Facebook event, a private Facebook book, book event. Ask her to send you the 10 VIP guest names and addresses so that you can mail them a catalog and their special invitation. Now, I do want to mention something about that. Um, for out of, out of state or out of town hostesses, <coughs> pardon me, inside those VIP packets, you might want to do this. Um, you might want to enclose that how to order guide. So your letter might read something like, Dear um, Sally, um, <clears throat> you are Heather's VIP. Because you are her VIP, here's your very own copy of the catalog that you can flip through to find your favorite products. And I've enclosed instructions on how to order. Now, and just add this little note here. If you want to mail her a gift, obviously, yes, you can do that. However, Maybe you want to write something else in that special invitation for your VIPs. Um, you might write something like, as an extra bonus for um, Heather's party he or Heather's VIPs, anyone who calls either the hostess or myself with their order will receive half price in embroidery on one item of their choice um, or something else. Um, to receive this incentive, you will have to call either the hostess or me so that we can enter your order to receive the special offer for VIP club members only. So did that did that make sense? Uh, let's see. Trying to remember who asked. Yes, Diana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Let me scroll up through these questions, ladies. Just one. Um. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm going down through them. Um, yes, the guest list with the address, email, phone number. It, I will, you know what, when I send out the, hold on just a second. Let me write some notes while I am talking to you ladies. And I tell you what, I'm going to stop the recording so that all this chat won't be on there. 